Kia ora, good evening. This section of State Highway 1 through Kennington is one of six accident hotspots around the country trialling new flexible speed limits. The New Zealand Transport Agency has set up the trial in an effort to curb the high number of accidents at the intersection of Kennington Road and State Highway 1. Today, the new control system was turned on for the first time. The system detects vehicles approaching the busy intersection and drops the speed limit from 100 kilometres to 70 kilometres for oncoming traffic on the state highway. The trial will last two years and if successful, the same warning system could be used nationwide. New Zealand Transport Authority Southland Area Manager Peter Robinson was on site as the trial was initiated. These signs are part of the NZTA, New Zealand Transport Agency's initiative for uh, safer journeys, of which one of those uh, is speed control. And so the element of this is to address um, nine crashes that we've had over five years. That's one of our um, black spots, if you like, in terms of intersections. So how do they work? They work on the principle that um, the, the road on the State Highway 1 will be 100 k's and so will so the side roads. When we have traffic on the from the side roads, um, the speed limit will drop to 70 kilometres an hour um, and we have uh, electronic signs that will interact with that information coming through uh, from radars. How does this rate around other Southland intersections? Will this be done elsewhere in Southland? The, this is one of six trials being done throughout New Zealand, um, so I think this one's the last one being set up now. Uh, these will be monitored for two years and if proven successful in terms of crash rate, um, they will be implemented where either we have safety issues that it's appropriate for. So when you say monitored, that's monitoring accidents or near misses or whatever people report? Uh, correct. We, there will be a full report being put together by the team who's running these, these six trials um, looking at success of, of uh, speed management. The NZIER quarterly survey of business opinion shows the economy has rebounded in the September 2013 quarter following a pause in mid-2013. Businesses are optimistic, up to, up to 32 per cent. Domestic trading activity, a very good indicator of GDP growth, rebounded to 11 per cent from 5 per cent, reversing a small drop in June. This is consistent with around 3 per cent annual GDP growth. The recovery is uneven across the regions. Canterbury is growing strongly, but momentum is waning across some key indicators like investment intentions. Costs and prices remain subdued. Inflationary pressures are concentrated in Canterbury, but there's little evidence of this spilling over to other regions yet. Young building enthusiasts flocked to the Invercargill Public Library today to take part in the Habitat for Humanity Build Challenge. Children of all ages took part in the event, building houses out of Lego to enter into a nation, nationwide online competition. Photos of the entries were posted on the Build Challenge website and the five houses with the most votes by the 20th of, of October will win a selection of the latest Lego range. Stephen, tell us about the Habitat for Humanity Build Challenge. It was started in the North Island by one of our Habitat affiliates there and it was run in about half the country last year and now we're running it throughout the country this year. So it's very exciting getting kids building houses and aware of what Habitat does. So it's a wee bit of a competition, tell us about that side of things. Right, so children are building houses out of Lego and then a photo of that house is being posted online and then people get to log in and vote for their favourite houses. And of course the most folks will win some prizes. There's a lot of Lego here today, where did that all come from? I believe it was donated by Lego kindly to us, so we're very appreciative of that sort of support. Now, there looks to be quite a few people here this morning. Have you had many kids involved so far? Uh, quite a few. We've had over 50 people in the doors this morning, and again, we'll have more this afternoon. Not all of them children, of course, some adults supporting and supervising. Now, how can um, kids at home get involved in this competition? They can build their house at home out of Lego and take the photo and upload it. There's a website, Habitat Build Challenge. How can people support Habitat for Humanity in the South if they want to get involved? Um, our main way of supporting us is actually by either volunteering, either on one of our build sites. We also have a restore in Glengarry Crescent. Um, we love donations because it's selling those is what raises our money to then build our houses for people. And what would you like families to know about Habitat for Humanity? Ah, our mission is that everybody has a decent place to live and that's a global mission. So not only do we work in Invercargill, but we also overseas do a lot of builds here as well. I made a pool with some spikes around it 
and I made a vehicle that that can fly and it's got three boosters at the back and I've got this wee bug up here with a, with a spider web with, the, with two, oopsies, with, with two aerials on the roof and I made an egg that and an alien with a gun that, that can shoot and I made this wee guy with a Captain America's uh, um, shield and, and this blue thing. Wow, there was lots of flowers around it and it was pretty big with some double doors and a wee archway before you came in the front door. Lots of windows. So when you finished your house, what did you do then? Um, well, we had to go up there and get it taken, a picture taken. And that means that you're in the competition? Yeah. The competition today isn't a fundraiser, just a way for kids and families to engage with Habitat for Humanity and have a bit of fun at the same time. And online entries can be made at buildchallenge.org until the 20th of October. The first stage of Housing New Zealand's First Home Initiatives has started in the south with the listing of eight southern properties. The properties are in Balclutha, Gore, Bluff, Cromwell and Invercargill and are all currently vacant. The First Home Scheme offers first home buyers 10% of the property's market value when they finalise the purchase and have been through a 10-day application and approval process. Invercargill and Bluff listing agent First, First Nationals Debbie Jameson says the prices are predetermined and there will be no negotiations throughout the sale process. There are 42 vacant state houses in the city, more are expected on the market in the coming months. Coming up after the break we find out what the key message is in Mental Health Week. This week is Mental Health Awareness Week and the Mental Health Foundation is encouraging New Zealanders to connect with people in their lives who may be feeling isolated or lonely. Connect, one of five ways of well-being, is the official theme for Mental Health Awareness Week 2013. Mentalhealth.org.nz reports that the recent Wellbeing Index showed that only 30% of Kiwis are connecting socially with others more than once a week. Raywin Clark from the 494D Day Activity Centre spoke to us earlier today about the campaign and the importance of connecting with others. This year's um, Connect and Connect is basically to be able to talk and listen, to interact with others, to give of your time to other people, um, promoting good participation in social areas of your life and within the community. Why has that been chosen as a theme? I think people are more and more aware that it's over the years, you know, people get more and more um, segregated, doing their own things, perhaps not meeting so much with their neighbours and, um, or, you know, people just get too busy mm -hmm. and it really is really important to have that balance in your life. What events have been held to do with this Mental Health Awareness Week? Well, um, with the Day Activity Centres we've got our current art exhibition which we chose to call Connect. Um, and that's run from the 13th of September and is actually going through to the 20th of October, a week longer than we expected. Um, there's lots of things within the community as well that are happening and um, I know yesterday that the library had um, books on prescription which was self-help books for well-being um, and people are able to go in there and view the books and enjoy some refreshments. So can you tell us um, about why you think it's important for there to be an awareness of mental health in the wider community? Um, it just helps people integrate back into our community after perhaps a period of unwellness and um, really mental health is part of everybody's health and, and um, it just helps work on the stigma and the discrimination that's often been felt by people in the past and it is getting better with the many um, very important and famous people that we have on TV, John Kerwin, um, just allowing people to be aware that it, 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 it is part of the wellness of the person and so that self-acceptance and the acceptance of others is really, really important. 
Auditions for Shakespeare in the Park 2014 will be held this Sunday, October the 13th at 4pm at Venture Southland in Invercargill. Venture Southland Creative Projects Manager Angela Newell said no experience was necessary and encouraged anyone keen to be involved in the project to come along to the auditions. Anyone interested in being an usher or part of the crew were also invited to come forth and be counted, she said. The production season is February 7th till 11th and rehearsals will start mid-January. Blind sportswoman Hannah Pascoe has long dreamed of running the New York Marathon and in November this year her dream will become a reality. Pascoe is part of a group of New Zealanders being supported at the marathon by Achilles International, a worldwide organisation which provides opportunities for sports people with disabilities to compete in mainstream sporting events. The 29-year-old runner and her guide Andrew Morton will fly to New York at the end of this month to compete in the world famous event which takes place on the 3rd of November. How did you first hear about the marathon and decide it was something that you wanted to do? Um, it was through a friend of mine who was supposed to do it quite a few years ago. And Andrew, how did you become involved in the equation? Um, Westpac was associated with the Halberg Trust and so Hannah in 2000 even uh, rode on the back of a tandem bicycle with one of our staff and then she got off a bike and said to me that it was a bit boring, who wants to run with me next year and that's how we got involved. <laughs> cool. So then we ran the following year. And what does your role as a running guide entail? Um, the running guide is pretty much Hannah's eyes for the marathon course, so just avoiding obstacles, curbs, etc. And also a bit of a commentator as I go as well, telling you what's going around with the surrounds as, as we make the journey. Cool. Yeah. So the marathon is quickly approaching. What kind of training have you been doing, Hannah? Uh, a lot of running. Mm -hmm. About five times a week I do um, a lot of treadmill running, and about once or twice a week um, Andrew and I will go running somewhere around in the cargo. And you do your training at um, World's Gym and Sid has modified a treadmill for you, tell us about that. Um, well what happened with that was I was having trouble with my leg because I usually hold on to the treadmill as I'm running and so together my physio and Sid kind of put together a bit of a, um, a strap belt type thing to attach onto the treadmill so I can run hands free and more balanced. Oh, fantastic. How are you raising or how have you raised funds for this trip? Uh, we've applied for grants from the Community Trust and the Macargo Licensing Trust as well, and Nakiti Matodangi Ponamu. Mm -hmm. Good pronunciation. <laughs> yep, as well. And we also had a quiz night as well. What are your goals for the marathon, Henna? Uh, well, one is finishing it, <laughs> <laughs> and um, two, I guess, um, just you know, giving it our best and you know, putting in a good time and having fun. Excellent. Yeah. And what are you most looking forward to about the trip? Oh, just the whole atmosphere. There's two million people watching the event and there's 45,000 people participating, so it's a massive event to be involved with. That's it from the news team tonight. Coming up next in sport, Central Pulse coach Robin Broughton.